you know, every historian, when they're looking at the past, is, of course, they're trapped in their own present, but they have to try to get out of the present into the past. And then, if, as we were talking about, if, they, if, the, if the sources enable them to get into one bit of the past, they then got to try to get out of that <laughs> into, another, into another bit of it. And moving on to sources, what were some of the primary sources that you drew upon to write The Last Great War of Antiquity, and what challenges did you face when using them? The, um, I think one of, one of my uh, sort of long-lasting concerns is to try to identify document-based information in literary sources. You see ancient historians in the Greek and Roman worlds, uh, when they were writing history, they were really writing literature. So they did their utmost to conceal uh, the sources that they used. But as we come into towards late antiquity, sometimes we catch a, we catch a glimpse of them and we catch a glimpse of whole documents underlying a text. Now, in the case of the last for the last great war of antiquity, um, a, uh, a, 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 a long um, uh, good chronicle written in the early ninth century uh, by a very grand monk, Theophanes, uh, has an account of the last great war. And one can see lurking within it whole uh, chunks of material taken from Heraclitus's dispatches from the field. And one can demonstrate this because in another source, the Easter Chronicle, which was finished probably in 630, Heraclitus's last dispatch is reproduced whole. Mm. And one can see the way the material in Theophanes uh, uh, dovetails with the material in uh, the Easter Chronicle. And the whole manner of exposition is the same. And then you find there's more underlying it. Uh, then in addition to that, in the Easter Chronicle, a, a lot of it consists of short uh, notices, which are like court notices or, you know, little notices issued by governments to say what, what has changed. And, and of course, when one thinks about it, any organized state uh, uh, um, uh, needs to keep its officials uh, serving in distant, dis in distant provinces and indeed the people at large, aware of what is happening at the center. And, you, and the center needs to know what is happening in the provinces. So the, the, what the center informs them in, in the form of little communiques and uh, the provinces, you write reports or generals write dispatches. So my view is that underlying an enormous amount of ancient history, there is documentary material, which we can't see mm. because they're all, they're all fine writers. The one exception, is uh, the historian Tacitus of uh, the High Roman Empire um, covering the uh, first century AD. Tacitus was a senator and it's, it can be demonstrated he made extensive use of the senatorial archives. Um, so uh, I'm simply generalizing that. Okay. And for our period, what's wonderful is that the writers are less uh, they're less keen on fine writing, they're more keen on basically presenting the truth. Mm -hmm. And so we can see them more clearly. And then when you start looking, you find them elsewhere. There's uh, an important Armenian source. And that gets us at, uh, we, we can get Persian documents from it. And that's the history of Kozrov. That's right. That's right. And that leads me to my next question. Um, from what I understand after reading your book, most of the sources you're dealing with for this period are non-Iranian and seem to be unsympathetic to the Persian cause. How do you, how were you able to see through whatever fabrications existed, the exaggerations and polemics in order to provide an even-handed account of this final war between the Romans and Persians? You have to work quite hard at it. But luckily, um, the Armenian, you see, the Armenians uh, I mean, Armenia now is reduced to a, a sort of rump of what it once was. Uh, in the area of the Transcaucasus, Armenia was the uh, the sort of big, uh, uh, the largest. They were the largest of the peoples, straddling the Roman and the Persian spheres. And they, indeed, they were partitioned for much of late antiquity. And the greater part of Armenia was in this Persian sphere. 
And so you get, uh, through Armenian sources, you get a, a, an in, inside view of uh, the Sasanian Empire, of Iran at the time. And despite uh, the, the sympathies of the two principal Armenian sources dealing with the last great war, despite their sympathy, because they were Christians, their sympathies for the Romans, uh, they they give uh, they pres preserve a lot of material which gives one an insight into uh, the Iranian world. And otherwise, one has to one has to delve back into the past and into other sources to 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 uh, to to get at it, but, and of course to travel there. Mm -hmm. And have a sense of 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 the of, of the of the country, um, but but basically it could quite it's quite hard work to read from uh, you know use a slanted source to get to get rid of the bias and to try to see what lies what lies behind it. Yeah, because I feel like that's the problem. Uh, many people working in Islamic studies or dealing with the early history of Islam are faced with is how do you reconcile uh, the sources that have exaggeration, polemics, um, fabrications, as well as the truth, um, but how do you extract um, and take out some of those um, some of those things that might be present in them in order to create a coherent, chronologically sound uh, narrative, which is something it seems like you accomplished in this book, which really, for me, gives hope to Islamicists who are hoping to do the same thing when they write early histories on, uh, say, Muhammad or, or Muslims after him. Yes, well, I think, think can we digress just a yes, moment of course. On, on that? Um, uh, I, um, I, uh, um, I, I certainly believe that by using non-Islamic sources, one can test, in fact, the pre-Islamic history, which is presented by uh, the Islamic sources. So I, I really take exception with the view which was current in the late 20th century, that there was a great deal of... Um, looking you know rewriting the past because of the concerns of the present and embroider embroidering it it seemed to me it has always seemed to me that the events of the seventh century were so extraordinary and so important to the faithful that it was inconceivable that people would be playing around with it so i take the view that on the core events of the prophet's life there's no question that 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 that, that was tampered with by by subsequent by subsequent subsequent writers. Um, uh, you know, every historian, when they're looking at the past, is of course they're trapped in their own present, but they have to try to get out of the present into the past. And then, if uh, as we were talking about, if they if if the, if the sources enable them to get into one bit of the past, they then got to try to get out of that <laughs> into another into another bit of it. And uh, so uh, I'm sure we will we will we'll, we'll come on to this, but um, I, I think that the Islamicists of the late 20th century are being superseded by Islamicists of the 21st century, uh, some of whom um, uh, uh, I taught, um, uh, notably uh, Ed Zikovich Coghill and uh, and uh, Andrew Andy Marsham. Uh, um, but there's also Sean Anthony in the United in the United States, who are extracting real history out of the early uh, out of the early materials. Um, uh, a task which, in the late twentieth century, um, people thought him, it thought it impossible to distinguish between what was spurious or embroidered, and what was uh, faithful. To reality. Yeah, I've, I've heard from other academics who are trying to write uh, a narrative history of uh, early Islam saying that getting over the skepticism of the 70s is a very difficult task concerning the sources. But um, as you mentioned, it seems like uh, people are moving in another direction. It's, it's good. It's good. It's I believe so. And I bet you it's good for you because you classify yourself a, a traditionalist in a sense of dealing with sources uh, to where you don't believe that. Um, I'm not saying that you don't believe that maybe fa pious fabrications or exaggerations didn't sure. creep in. But for the most part, um, they're still telling um, the essence of what is being told is still historical. Exactly. Exactly. And um, I will. Uh, 
guide people or or plug in your uh talk the quran as a historical source because you mentioned six scenes from sixth century uh, Arabian political history that the Quran talks about. And when looking at the um, what was written about those in extra e extraneous literature, it seems pretty, I don't wanna say accurate, but it seems like they came pretty close to describing the event as it's understood from other sources. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. And I should just say, going back to uh, trying to get at the Iranian view of things, which we were, we were talking about, that of course, it's uh, early Islamic sources, they receive a lot more from Iran uh, than, uh, so we don't have contemporary Iranian sources, but we have later material in these Islamic sources. And they basically give us an account, basically it's court focused, it's focused on the great figures and the court. And so they give us something of the flavor of Iranian, of Iranian history. And this is in Tabari, in Al Tabari, and then later in the great uh, uh, Iranian epic, uh, Firdaus's Shalami. Okay. Yeah, uh, Al Tabari is uh, one of my favorite historians from uh, the Islamic world. I really, uh, I have uh, half of his uh, great history. Um, I know it's like 30 volumes, but I managed to, you know, grab 15 of them. And I really enjoy his work. I mean, he gives you everything from the sources he has, and then he gives you his opinion, which yes, uh, I found to be very different from other contemporaries of his. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And different from all classical historians, except possibly the first of them, Herodotus, mm -hmm. who would also give different opinions and then give his own. All right. And